Hello class, welcome to the lecture on probability. I'm gonna combine a bunch of things down into just two lectures, so this is just lecture one of two. And I wonder if you even think about probability. Does it something that affects your life? Does this matter to you at all? Um, I might be able to grab your attention with a, a story from a book I read the other day about some MIT students who recognized in the late 90s that their local lottery had made a bit of a mistake and not thought through the odds of something that when you have this case with this special case, if you do this scratch with that pie, that the odds got really, really good. So they managed to convince some investors to give them a few thousand dollars and they made a few million dollars. Um, there's one reason why probability matters. But I think it's more important than that, that this is something that actually people throw at you stuff all the time of your chances of success, of if you played football in high school, then what are your chances of playing in college? And if you played in college, what are your chances of going pro? And on and on like that, people throw numbers at you all the time. C-3PO is famous for giving the odds of surviving this asteroid belt. So there's, there's all kinds of times where people are throwing these numbers at you, and I don't really have time to go super in depth into this, but I think this is another good advertisement for statistics class to say, this is much more real life than shooting rockets and finding out their instantaneous velocity of orbiting around the moon, that the probability of events matters much more to you than calculus, so take statistics if you can. So I want to talk to you about uh, three different things. I want to talk to you about license plates, dealing cards, and cards in your hand. That those are the three talking points that I have for this lecture here today on Intro to Probability. So what do I mean? Why are we talking about license plates? Is that if you're trying to make a license plate and you've got three slots for letters and three slots for numbers. So you've got A through Z, A through Z, A through Z, followed by O through nine, O through nine, O through nine. How many license plates can you make? Well, you know, since there's no lowercase, it's all uppercase, that there are 26 possibilities here, 26 possibilities here, 26 possibilities here, 10, 10, and 10. But what do we do with all of those numbers? What does it mean? Well, for if we were just making a two-digit license plate, you would have A, 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 B, A, C, uh, on and on and on like that, and you would see, ah, okay, so for each A, there is 26, for B, there's 26, for starting with C, there's 26, so it's 26 times 26. So this whole huge number here is gonna be multiplied. All right, so all together, three letters and three numbers make 17,576,000 possible license plates. Now, would it be better, so I think there's more people than that in Missouri. I know there's in the greater St. Louis area, but uh, there's about 14 million. So what would it be to get all letters then? Maybe we should just do six letters. Well. I hope you can see that since we're just multiplying on down the line, that that first one could have been 26 to the third times 10 to the third. And if we wanted to find six uh, letter spots, that that would just be 26 to the sixth. There's a shortcut way for us to be able to do that. So now the number of possibilities goes up to 308 million, 915,776. So that's a lot more possibilities there. If you wanted to think about how many possible YouTube uh, addresses, at the end of the little YouTube address, there's 64 possible things, since they do upper and lowercase and numbers and two symbols. And I think there are eight or 12 letters in a YouTube address. So that would be 64 to the eighth I'll link to the Tom Scott video where Tom explains that way better than I could. All right, so that was the first one. License plates are one example of a, something that is not being used up, not used up. But when you deal cards, when somebody is dealing you cards uh, onto the table, then how many possible ways could it go in the beginning? Well, you need to know that there are 52 cards in the deck to begin with. 
So that's how many possible possibilities there are for the first one that they hand you. But then the deck has gotten smaller. So for the second card they're gonna hand you, that would be 51 possibilities. And then there's two less cards in the deck now than there was at the start, so there's only 50 possibilities for how the third card they deal could go. On and on down the line, and if we wanted to ask how many possible ways after you shuffle a deck of cards, whether you hand them out or you're just looking at the deck and saying how many possibilities are there for ways that a deck could be shuffled? Well, that's gonna be 52 times 51 times 50 times 49 times 48 on down the line to one. And this operation of multiplying by one less than you, by one less than that, by one less than that, on down the line until it goes away, is something that comes up often enough that we give it a symbol, that we write that as exclamation point is the sign, and it's pronounced factorial. Factorial is how that's pronounced. It's not 52! I had a student do that once. But it's um, 52 factorial, which means 52 times 51 times 50 times 49 on down the line. All right, so now suppose we wanted to say what are the ways that you could um, deal out 52 cards, a regular deck, into five cards for one person, for example, in poker. So you would say, well, that's going to be 52 times 51 times 50 times 49 times uh, 48. That's going to be 311,875,200 ways that you can deal five cards out of a deck. But surely there must be some kind of formula. There must be some kind of way that we can construct saying, okay, I started with 52 and I took out five of them, what's the formula involving 52 and five to be able to just come up with this number and ideally make the calculator do it for us? Well, you have to recognize that this thing that we're doing here has a name in math. It's called permutation, and the symbol is just P. And in math, we like to talk about, um, we have N things taken R at a time. Okay, so that's gonna be NPR. That's the little symbol there that we use. It is, it's, it's in your calculator. If you press math and then move over to probability, there's NPR. You have to type the, the N number first, NPR, the R number equal. And this is a formula for us to be able to say, in our example up there, we're saying I've got 52 cards and I wanna deal five of them. How many ways can that go down? So what the calculator does, and what you need to be able to do, is to say, all right, that's gonna be 52 factorial over 52 minus five factorial. Well, 52 minus five is 47, and how in the world does that simplify? Well, if you recognize, if you remember when we said what 52 factorial is, 52 times 51 times 50 times 49 times 48 times, you know, my arm's getting tired. I'm just gonna stop and call that 47 factorial. Oh, that's 47 factorial on the top and the bottom. Oh, that's how that works, okay. So their formula is actually rather ingenious. It gets us to a place where we can cancel, and you really need to know the formula because somewhere, it might even be by 52 factorial, your calculator will crap out and not be able to handle the numbers get so large. So, well, definitely, okay, maybe it's in the 60s. I think it's in the 60s somewhere, but you can solve things that your calculator can't because you can cancel if you remember the definition of factorial. So. The formula is NPR is equal to N factorial over N minus R factorial. There's a formula that will tell us I have N things, I take five of, I take R of them, and how many ways can that go down? All right, last one. We've talked about things that aren't being eaten up, and that was my example of license plates. We talked about things that are being eaten up, are being eaten up, and that's called permutation. And now lastly, we need to think about the fact that, well, yes, 
five cards dealt into your hand, like ace, two, three, four, five, that that is something that is a pretty good hand of cards, assuming they're all in the same suit. But it's no different than if you had gotten ace, two, three, five, four. That when you've got the cards in your hand, order doesn't matter. Order doesn't matter. And again, this has got a particular name in math, and again, it's an unfortunate name. It's called combination. And this is unfortunate because you're gonna all think of combination locks where order does matter, but these terms were established a few hundred years ago when they meant slightly different things. So combination is symbolized in math as uh, NCR, and again, this is in your calculator. If you press math and move over to probability, then there's an NCR there for you to use. And if we really wanted to know how many hands can be dealt uh, in poker, that if you've got a 52 card deck and you're dealing five cards out of it, well, yes, it's true that there are 52 cards being dealt out and that uh, 52 minus five, that 47 factorial of those ways aren't available to us because we're only getting five cards. But it's also true that five factorial of those hands are the same as one another. That ace, two, three, four, five, and ace, three, two, five, four, and ace, three, two, four, five, and two, three, four, five, ace, and on and on and on and on. Five factorial, 120 of those possibilities are all the same. They're in your hand. You don't care what order they came to you in your hand. All right, so now really, there aren't 300 million ways for you to get five cards uh, dealt to you at the beginning, that there are only 2,598,960 ways for you to be dealt five cards. Still quite a few different possible hands. So what was the formula that I followed there? I said that NCR is equal to uh, N factorial over N minus R factorial, R factorial. That since order doesn't matter, many of the possibilities are the same and that you get less possible things that matter when you don't care about order. One more of these to go and we'll be done with Precalculus's look at probability.